Ladies and gentlemen, a big hand for Professor Wichitra Thaksaniyakun. So, thank you very much for <laughs> waiting until the last lecture. I'm not sure who put me in the last minute of the meeting. I would thanks for that as well. But I would like to thank all of the audience who be with us until the last minute. I think after the talk, all the people here could come to Ajahn Vasan and get some payment from him <laughs> for being a good uh, audience for this meeting. The topic that they assigned me today is about updating on pharmacogenomic of severe cutaneous adverse drug reaction, the study that has been carried out in the Thai population. I think this morning, Dr. Cholapat has do a very good review on some of the work that have been doing in Thailand since the last, uh, I would say, 10 years. The outline of my talk today, I just review a little bit on the scar induced by carbamazepine and allopurino, which is most of the part Dr. Chulapan has reviewed for you already in the morning. The second part of my talk, I just would like to show you some of our recent research on genetic marker of scar induced by cotamoxazole and phenytoin. As you have seen from Dr. Vimon in the morning that the top five causative drug of Steven Johnson syndrome and 10 in our Thai population is, the top one is cotamoxazole, followed by allopurino, carbamazepine, nevilapine, and phenytoin. Allow 2004, a group of Taiwanese scientists, which is led by white Professor Wai Tishan and Professor Chung has done some study in Han Chinese, and he has showed, they have showed that HLA-B1502 is strongly associated with carbamazepine induced Steven Johnson syndrome and 10 with the odd ratio of almost 2,500 fold higher. After that, uh, the same group in Taiwan has already identified HLA-B5801 as the genetic marker of severe cutaneous adverse duct reaction caused by allopurino. The odd ratio for HLA-B5801 with severe cutaneous adverse duct reaction, which is include three phenotypes, Steven Johnson syndrome, 10, and dresses, uh, are very high, up to almost 584 higher in the patient who carry this allele. The one point that Dr. Sholopan had already pointed out to you that some of these markers, particularly for HLA1502 and carbamazepine in the USJS and 10, seem to be ethnic specific. The association was very strong in Han Chinese, but not in Japanese and European population. Whereas the HLA5801 with allopurino seemed to be globalized, not so ethnic specific. Anyway, when we look at the frequency of 1502 and 5801 in the world population, you will see that particularly 1502 allele frequency, it is quite low in European and in Japanese as well as in Korea, uh, whereas the allele frequency 1502 or 5801 in Chinese and in Thai as well as in other Southeast Asian population seem to be much higher. At, at this point, we're talking about HLA for several hours, but I'm not sure any one of us here know what is HLA is. HLA is the, the gene that everyone has to contain this gene, so this gene exists in every 
people, not only the person who will develop Steven Johnson syndrome, it is the cell surface antigen presenting protein, which is this protein encoding from MSC gene located on chromosome 6. What is the function of HLA? The HLA function is to present antigen to the T cell, and then after that, immune reaction could occur. So everyone has to have HLA, otherwise we will die from infection. The problem is each of us carry out different allele of HLA. Some may carry the allele which is associated with Steven Johnson syndrome, some may not. And then I'm lucky enough, I test myself for HLA. I did not carry none of this one. No 1502 from my father or mother, no 5801, so I'm quite safe. Um, the question arises when the, the Chinese uh, scientists had shown this strong association, and the, this association cannot be confirmed in other population, as I said, cannot be confirmed in Japanese, cannot be confirmed in European people. So the question is, is this association is really true, or it just by chance? So our group seems to be the first group that can be replicated or can be confirmed that the association with HLA-1502 and carbamazepine induced Steven Johnson syndrome and 10 are quite strong. Either in the epileptic patient who use carbamazepine as anti-epilepsy, or even with the neuropathic patient who use carbamazepine to kill neuropathic pain. The risk of carbamazepine induced SJS and 10 in our Thai population who carry 1502 is almost 55 fold higher compared to Chinese. We are a little bit no, far from the odd ratio that they have been shown. They are 2,000 fold, ours is only 55 fold. But anyway, this is considered as very, very strong association. The data we have right now, we have 72 SJS and 10 patients from carbamazepine and almost 100 uh, patients who have been using the drug without any adverse drug reaction. And the, the results we found are the same, strong association between 1502 and carbamazepine in the SJS and 10. So 1502 is a varied marker. It can be used for prediction of carbamazepine induced Steven Johnson syndrome. So why many of the um, hospital now been screening for 1502 be before prescribing carbamazepine in our pet type patient. Um, strong association for 5801 as well as uh, 5801 with allopurinol induced Steven Johnson syndrome and 10 also show in our Thai population. We done this in 2010, and we found that the odd ratio for patients who carry 5801 is almost, um, sorry, would be 348-4 higher. Right now, we are about to publish one article on the allopurinol induced Steven Johnson syndrome. We have identified that not only HLA B5801 is a risk factor for Steven Johnson syndrome 10 addresses. The sex or gender of patient, female are at higher risk, fourfold higher of developing SJS10 address from allopurinol. The patient who has renal impairment also has high risk of allopurinol induced scar. So you have to be careful when you going to prescribe or going to use allopurinol in your patient, whether to check 5801 as well as be careful in female patient. Be careful in patient who has renal impairment because there are more chance to develop SJS10 or even dresses. The other work that we've been, our group been doing uh, and collaborating with other research group as well, after we found out that 
these two alleles may be a valid marker for predictive of HAS or 10 in our Thai population. We try to convince the healthcare policy maker that screening of these alleles may be beneficial for our patient. The way to convince them is to show them the cost effectiveness of HLA testing. So these two publications uh, clearly show that by performing HLA B1502 or 5801 before prescribing carbamazepine or allopurinol is considered as cost-effectiveness intervention for prevention of duct-induced SJS in a Thai population. Um, some of us may wonder, what about the other drug-induced Steven Johnson syndrome, such as cortamoxazole, that being the highest prevalence uh, in Thailand? Um, in the last, I think in, in last year, the, almost the end of last year, we have published one of our work on cortamoxazole-induced Steven Johnson syndrome and 10. Uh, you may already know that the drug Cortamoxazole consists of sulfamethoxazole and timetopine. This drug in the past has been used for several infections, but nowadays, because of the serious cutaneous adverse drug reaction of the drug, the use of this drug is now quite limited, just to, uh, for some certain disease. This is the most common cause of SJS and 10 in the past in Thailand. But nowadays, I would say allopurinol will be the number one cause of Steven Johnson syndrome and 10 in our country. We did a case control study by enrolling almost 43 patient, about 43 patients who has HAS or 10 from cortamoxazole, and 91 patients who use the drug without any adverse drug reaction. As you can see here, the age of the patient between the case and the control group are quite comparable. Sex are quite comparable as well. Um, most of our patients are inpatient for the cases. Most of them has been admitted in the hospital for treatment of scar. So the phenotype, this would tell us that the phenotype of scar in our cases group are quite definite. This is the result that we been found. For those case and control, we genotype for HLA three locus, HLA-A, HLA-B, HLA-C, uh, sorry, as well as HLA class two as well. ABC is HLA class one, so we done both, class one and class two. What we found is only three allele, as I show you here, HLA-B1502, HLA-C0602, HLA-C0801, was significantly correlated with SJS and 10 caused by cortamoxazole, with the odd ratio ranging from 3 to 11. If you see this odd ratio and then compare with the odd ratio achieved from carbamazepine and allopurinol, you will see that the odd ratio we found with cortamoxazole is quite low when compared to those two drugs. So this suggesting us that HLA molecule here may not play major role for Steven Johnson syndrome or 10 in the by cortamoxazole. It may be other molecule involving in the severe cutaneous adverse duct reaction as well. Um, what we're going to do next in our study, and some of the study has been uh, done already, I will show you in the next slide. The drug metabolizing enzymes of this compound, sulfamethoxazole, is catalyzed by cytochrome P452C9 to the active metabolite. And we believe that this active metabolite will cause hypersensitivity. So 2C9 is the enzyme that involved in bioactivation of active metabolite. However, the other enzymes such as glutathione S transferase or NAD is the enzyme involving in 
detoxification of sulfur methoxazole. Uh, we interested in whether this genetic polymorphism, particularly on 2C9 and on glutathione S transferase, may contribute to, to the list of cortamoxazole induced Steven Johnson syndrome and 10. And recently, it has been reported that genetic polymorphism of glutamate cysteine ligase catalytic subunit, which is the here, as I show you here. This is the enzyme that involved in synthesis of glutathione, which is used for detoxification of reactive metabolite here, has been shown to be a marker for sulfur methoxazole in the hypersensitivity in Caucasian population. So what we did next is we investigate the genetic polymorphism of GCLC gene, which is involved in synthesis of glutathione in cortamoxazole induced Steven Johnson syndrome in our Thai population. As you see here, all of these genotypes, GT genotype, GG, or when combined both, seem to have no significant association with cortamoxazole in the SJS N10. And what about cytochrome P452 C9? Cytochrome P452 C9 genotype is the genotype that the, the person who carry this genotype, the activity of 2C9 will be reduced. So we think that if we see any association, it may, may tell us that this may going to be one of the valid marker, but unfortunately, we found that its association is not significant, uh, correlated with cortamoxazole induced Steven Johnson syndrome. So right now, as I show you, only three alleles of HLA are strong, oh, sorry, are significantly correlated with cortamoxazole. Other dark metabolizing enzyme that we study seem to be not correlated. Whether the, those three HLA allele could be used as varied marker for screening of cortamoxazole induced Steven Johnson syndrome or not need to be further investigated in larger population. So we wait for that result in the near future. We we still doing uh, some study uh, to confirm that whether those HLA or other gene involved with the cortamoxazole in the HAS or not. The next study that we've been doing uh, recently and just published in the beginning of this year is the genetic marker of phenytoy induced scar in our Thai population. After we found that carbamazepine strongly associated with HLA1502, many people interested in phenytoin uh, in the HAS as well because this drug is quite common use, anti convulsant drug. Uh, if we look at the structure of phenytoin compared to carbamazepine, it contains aromatic link, which is very similar structure. In the past, we already know from epidemiology data that 30% of the patients who are allergic to carbamazepine will have caused hypersensitivity to phenytoin as well. So with the preliminary evidence from our researcher from Chilalongkorn University and also from from Hong Kong University. These two preliminary studies, they have shown that patients who has 1502 positive view allergic to phenytoin as well. So this is for patients who has Steven Johnson syndrome and 10 from phenytoin, but also four of them positive for 1502, and this is only one Han Chinese who has phenytoin in the HAS, and he has been tested for 1502 positive. From this preliminary data, the US FDA, only a few months after the result come out from the uh, journal, the US FDA has promptly announced to the, all the healthcare provider that they should be considered avoiding phenytoin and false phenytoin, which is derivative of phenytoin, 
as the alternative for carbamazepine in patients who test positive for 1502. The meaning for this is, if the patient are positive for 1502, the doctor should not give them phenytoin or false phenytoin. This is the warning from the US FDA. But anyway, as I showed you, data for that is very, very preliminary. Only five or six patients has been reported that. Anyway, we keep wondering, is this association is really true or just by chance that the patient has 1502 and then uh, got Steven Johnson syndrome from Finitoy? Until 2004, this is a big uh, Chiwa study from the Taiwanese group, the same group that identified carbamazepine and allopurinol linked with 1502 or 5801. They did the GWA study, gene, genome-wide association study, and they found that only two genes are tightly linked with phenytoin in the HJS and 10. HLA1502 and cytochrome P452 C9 star 3 seem to be a valid genetic marker for prediction of phenytoin in the HJS and 10 in Han Chinese. This is the first report in 2004, and after that, there seemed to be no other report come out. Um, let me clarify you a little bit on 2C9 star 3. If we look at the metabolic pathway of phenytoin here, you will see that 2C9 is the major duct metabolizing enzyme involving in the metabolism of phenytoin. If the patient carry 2C9 star 3, it means that the activity of 2C9 will be reduced, so the, the metabolism or the clearance of phenytoin will be decreased in that patient. So when the clearance decreases, the accumulation of phenytoin in our body uh, will be occur. Increase in the concentration of phenytoin may lead to the increased le leaks of uh, phenytoin in the hypersensitivity. The theory is this. And then some may ask that, why is going to be star 3, why not star 2? Lucky that we don't have star 2 in our Thai population. We have star 1, which is white Thai, and then star 3, which is the defective allele, okay? So we interested in 2C9 star 3, whether it linked with Steven Johnson syndrome caused by phenytoin. We did a study in Mm, 39 HAS and 10 patients from phenytoin, and then 21 phenytoin induced dresses syndrome uh, here, and compare the result with 92 patients who have been using um, phenytoin but without any adverse duct reaction. We found that the odd ratio, uh, sorry, this is 1502. We detect 1502 in this patient, and then we found that the odd ratio of the, the Steven Johnson syndrome and 10 did not increase in the patient who carry 1502, and the list of dress in the patient with 1502 also not statistically significant. So this result telling us that 1502 may not be a valid marker for using for screening of phenytoin induced Steven Johnson syndrome and 10 or phenytoin induced dress. Even though your skin um, negative or positive doesn't give you any clue of Steven Johnson syndrome induced by phenytoin. So the next question is what is linked with Phenytoin, for the 2C9 star 3, which is the dark metabolizing enzyme, we found that the patient who carry 2C9 star 3 will has a higher risk of phenytoin induced SJS and 10, but not phenytoin induced dresses. For 2C9 star 3, it can be used only for prediction of phenytoin induced Steven Johnson syndrome and 10, but seem to be not valid for phenytoin induced dress. 
what about other HLA allele? In this study, we have identified four HLA allele, which is, which is significantly associated with phenytoin in the SJS and 10. One is HLA-B5602 with the odd ratio of almost tenfold, HLA-C1402, HLA-B5101, HLA-B3802, the odd ratio of this allele for Steven Johnson syndrome range from three to tenfold higher, whereas phenytoin induced, induced by dread in whereas phenytoin in the uterus, we found that only HLA-B5101 is significantly associated with this phenotype with the odd ratio of about five. So there are all the story that has been published or has been uh, completely uh, done since uh, the beginning of this year, we have some many projects going on, as I said, to confirm the genetic marker of phenytoin. We're going to do the GWAS study. I think the, the result come out already. And then waiting for the analysis result as Sadip has with his study. We also have the cotamoxazole induced uh, Steven Johnson syndrome project going on to confirm the allele we have is the valid allele or not. I just would like to end my talk by summarizing that what do we know about pharmacogenetic of severe cutaneous adverse duct reaction until now? The first thing, as you notice, that the association between HLA allele and duct induced scar is quite strong. Some of them extremely strong, like carbamazepine and 1502, more than 2004 in Han Chinese. This is much stronger than the association between smoking and lung cancer. The second thing is the association seems to be duct, HLA specific. So for carbamazepine, it has to be 1502 for allopurino is going to be 5801 for phenytoin is going to be B5602 so this make life more complicated a little bit because it's not universal universal for all the third thing is association between HLA allele seem to be specific to certain scar phenotype as I showed you before, 1502 with carbamazepine associated with Steven Johnson syndrome, but not associated with dress and maculopapular lash. The fourth one is ethnic specificity. These allele, some of them valid only in certain ethnic not for universal global population, such as 1502 and carbamazepine in the SJS and 10, where it can be used only for prediction in Han Chinese in Southeast Asian population. But for Caucasian, Japanese, or Korea, 1502 cannot be used. Other allele, as Dr. Shalopat has shown, is HLAA, 3101 are good marker for these two population, Caucasian and Japanese. The fourth is the HLA seem to be not the only the genetic marker. It's the key element for pathogenesis of scar. Some of you may already know, particularly physician and uh, pharmacies that HLA involved in cutaneous adverse drug reaction, uh, either by HEP10 hypothesis, PI hypothesis, or outer cell lepitor hypothesis. This has been shown that they are key element in pathogenesis of scar. The last one that has been um, shown nicely and beautifully by Dr. Chalapat is that the HLA pharmacogenetics now has been ready for use in clinic. This is, has been shown um, in the slide in the morning already. There are several labs 
in Thailand that could do service for HLA. Actually, we are from Kongan University. Uh, we have established pharmacogenetic lab for more than 10 years. I would say we are the first, but we're not the best. <laughs> Dr. Shalopat may be the best because of the manpower or everything is ready for them to do. But not only in our center, uh, in Lama Tipudi Hospital, as well as in big university hospital, Chulalongkorn University, Sililat University Hospital, can offer HLA tests. And moreover, the, I'm not sure, the Department of Mm. I forgot the name, sorry. Medical Service Technology, Medical Service Department, Ministry of Public Health can do the test for you as well. And this lab, which is belong to Gomvitiya Sat Kanpet, they said they have more than 10 labs available allow each city of the country. So, it's easy to use and ready for you to use. So it's up to you now whether you would like your patient to be at least of that induced Stephen Johnson syndrome or you would like to prevent them from this life threatening uh, advert duck reaction. So I think it's, it's up to you now. Um, sorry, one. One will ask that how much does it cost for HLA genotyping? HLA genotyping mostly in general for the Gombitiya Sat Kanpet and the one that we provided in our center costs about 100 baht for each HLA. And in Dr. Cholapat lab, which is do HLA-B genotyping, which is more detail of that, they'll cost about 2,500 baht. And if you are government officer or you are the officer working in the company, all the payment for the pharmacogenetic test could be reimbursed from your insurance agency. So don't hesitate to use it. The end of, before I end up my talk, I would like to thank all my collaborators, uh, physician, pharmacists. I'm not sure Alisa Al Al here or not. Probably she, she is gone already. She is a one of our active members from General Police Hospital. Um, most of them heal us a lot and would like to thank my postgraduate student and all the scientists or pharmacists who have been involved actively in our research. So thank you very much for your attention and then staying with us until the last minute. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Vijitra Thasaniyakun. So, Wow, thank you for all of you too for staying together. Stay tuned together until the end of today.